Well, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the, the first of our Thursday night uh, live streams where pastor is here at the church uh, all by himself for the uh, Thursday night worship. Um, and uh, as you all know, we uh, have, uh, in lieu of all of the, uh, the things that are going on right now in the world with the COVID-19 and the worries about uh, uh, being, uh, being uh, uh, infected, and so we have the social distancing going on. We can't get much more so socially distant uh, than we are right now uh, with me being, being here in this large church building all by myself. And I will confess it's a little peculiar. Uh, it's one thing to do the live streams for my devotions from the office by myself, and it's another to be in here all by myself, just even here in the, uh, the chapel. And uh, Sunday I'll probably do the live stream for the Sunday service uh, from the sanctuary, so that'll be even more strange. Uh, but hopefully um, Catherine will be with me then, and Gail. So hopefully I won't be all by myself, feeling completely strange. But uh, just so you're aware, as we're going through this time of difficulty and we're trying to remain in touch and, and keep some keep up our, our, our spirits and, and, and our, 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 our faith, um, realize that, that every morning, uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, at 9 a.m. I am doing a devotional and that I've been I've done that since this past Monday uh, So this morning was the fourth one of those devotions if you'd like to watch those or If you know somebody that might might benefit from from having just a little bit of, a, of encouragement each morning um, and, and some 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 uh, uh, some renewal of faith and hopefully hopefully some blessing that comes from it um, let them know that, that on the uh, church's Facebook page, uh, which is where you are now, most likely if watching this, um, unless you're on my own page when I share this video later, uh, or on our YouTube page when I, when I post the video that's running on camera number two, um, when I post that onto the YouTube channel, um, if you want to see the devotionals every morning, um, Monday through Saturday, uh, go to the Woodlawn Christian Church, Lake City, Iowa, uh, go to the, our Facebook page and uh, and like the page and check that you want the notifications when we do a live stream. I believe there's a function on there to do that. Uh, and, and you'll be able to watch the, the devotionals uh, each morning at 9. Uh, on Sunday, I won't be doing a devotion at 9 because we'll be like we're live streaming these, this sermon on Thursday nights at 7. On Sunday morning, we'll be doing the same thing, live streaming at 10 a.m., uh, a, a sermon and hopefully a little bit more than just what we're doing here tonight. We're going to hopefully flesh this out a little bit more uh, to make it a little bit more uh, closely resemble a worship service. We're just getting started on this, folks, so so forgive me for, for not having everything in line to, to make this a little bit more, as, as much as we can anyway, um, a, a more of a genuine worship service. Uh, we're all learning, so praise God that we, that we have the technology uh, to allow us to do what we're doing here tonight. Uh, so tonight, um, I don't have a, a Catherine here to play. Um, hopefully, again, on Sunday, we will have Catherine to play a little bit of music for us to bless us with that. Um, so tonight, I'm going to do a, a first reading, a second reading, and then something a little different than I normally do on my Thursday, normal Thursday night, where I preach from the second reading. I'm going to go ahead and do more like what I do on Sunday morning, where then I have another reading, and that's what I give my, my message over. So with that, um, our first uh, scripture reading comes from the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, we're in chapter 16, and we're looking at verses 1 through 13. And I printed this off today in the uh, NIV translation. Uh, since nobody's here to read the few Bibles, I can pick whatever translation I wanted. So I'm using the NIV right now for this first reading. So excuse me. First Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 through 13. Samuel anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If, Sam, if Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. 
Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Saul saw Elib and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Saul said, so Samuel said, Send for him. He, we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Saul then went, went to Ramah. And our second reading is going to be from the book of Ephesians. And we're going to look at chapters or chapter 4, and we're looking at verses 17 through 32, which is the end of part of the chapter. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you have, should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore put away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that we may have something to give him who has need. For, who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of re re redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And the scripture I want to preach over tonight comes immediately after those verses we just read in Ephesians. Uh, we're beginning with the first chapter of, of or the first uh, verse of chapter 5. We're looking at chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of those things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, 
For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Here in the book of Ephesians, um, which is one of the disputed letters of Paul, uh, meaning some, some scholars argue that it, that it was written by, by someone later um, by, than Paul, and that's really not something I want to really even delve into tonight. I'll just mention it because I tend to try to mention those things when it was such the case. This letter, if not Pauline, um, certainly is a, a, an accumulation of all of the other letters of Paul. There's little bits and pieces of, of those letters in Ephesians and in Colossians as well. Colossians and Ephesians are very, very similar. But here we are contrasting um, in the, the, the beginning of this reading that I talked about here, walk in love, uh, and then in the later part, um, the walk in light, contrasting that, that badness that we used to be, that, 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 that filthiness, the covetousness, the lying, the stealing, uh, the, 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 all of these things that we, that we equate with sin, um, and we're contrasting that with, with that we are to be imitators. Uh, the very first verse of chapter 5, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. That's one of those things that causes some of us a little bit of of, of trepidation and concern when we say to be Christ-like and say, well, I can't be like Christ because I'm merely human. And that's true. We can't get to the level of Christ. I have told the story before of uh, when I used to teach Sunday school at Sunset Hills in Omaha. I used to say that I wanted to get a shirt that said uh, uh, Timothy. Yeah, because I couldn't be like Paul. Paul is, too, is unachievable, and I certainly couldn't be like Jesus, but maybe, just maybe, I could make it to being Timothy. So maybe I should try, you know, I, I, I can be Timothy. And the problem with that is that it admits failure right out of the starting gate, doesn't it? We know we can't live up to Christ. We know that we can't be that perfect man. But that doesn't mean we're supposed to give up on trying. We are to do our absolute God-given best to be imitators of Christ. That is what we are called to as Christians. That's a call, tall order. That's a difficult order. It's an order where we kind of like, mm, we want to move away, we want to give up right away, and so we'll just say, we can't be like Jesus. And so we won't even, get, we won't even start down that road I'll, because I kind of want to continue in my sin anyway because I kind of like my sin. You know, your sin is, is bad, but my sin, eh, it's not that bad. Um, and I... I a few months ago, I had the, le the, the, the chart that showed you know, level of the badness of your sin and the badness of my sin. And your, your sin was like pretty bad, and mine's not that bad, so this is okay. Um, that's a bad chart. Um, we, 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 should, we shouldn't even throw that chart out there. But, but we do. All of us do. Um, we need not to do that. We need, we need to, to, to move away from that. We need to give up on this thing about lying. About one another, we need to give up on starting rumors about others. Um, that's something that we really need to work on. We need to work on this. He, he mentions here about being angry. Be angry and do not sin, but do not let the sun go down on your anger. He understands that, that, that even Jesus got angry, but then he sought to correct what was it was that caused that anger and to address that anger and not to and not to delve in reside in that place of anger. That's not where we're called to be. We're called to live in a state of love, in a state of forgiveness, a state of grace. That is the condition God wants us in. So he wants us to express his love to this broken world. And today we live in a world that's a little more broken than normal, it seems. Uh, for the very reason that I'm talking to an empty room and two cameras that are going. One is live streaming and one is recording. Um, so I should put faces on those tripods. That would be, that would help me out perhaps or freak me out, one or the other. Um, but we are, we are, we are supposed to, uh, to be imitators of Christ. We are supposed to, to, to 
to extend love to one another. And we, we need to do that, and we need to realize that there is trouble in this world at times, and that we are to be the voice of love and reason and forgiveness. And we need to search our minds. Whenever we're faced with a situation like this whole thing with this COVID-19, how can we be God in this world? What, what can we do to, to not, not to be God, but to be God's hands and feet? I should correct myself. But to, to, to be the reflection of Christ in this world. What do I do to try to do that? And it might be large things. It might be small things. It might be that we think, oh, I can't go there. Um, I'm not worthy of that. The story in 1 Samuel of David. David uh, was called to be king, now, often thought of uh, to be have been the greatest king of all the, the kings of Israel. And of course, certainly, he's the line of David. Jesus is in the line of David. Um, David was just the youngest son. He was the least of all, the less, least likely. Um, so don't ever count yourself out because you're too young or too old or to this or to that. God don't do that. That doesn't count people out for anything. Um, you're always in play. All of us are in play. All of us are there as instruments of God's handy, handiwork. And so when we are called to answer that, that need to, to be that hand and that foot or that voice or just that listening ear, uh, we need to remember that we are doing this in God's. We are to walk in love. That's what Ephesians 5, to 1, 5 1 to 7 is all about walking in love and imitators of Christ. In this time, uh, we, we can look for large and small things. We, there, I, I see many things. I know that, uh, that Janelle Nesbitt, I mentioned Janelle, who goes to Union Church, um, has offered to deliver uh, food from the, from the, uh, the, the restaurants to people that, that are, are shut in. And that's a wonderful uh, thing for her to offer to do. I, I have offered to to uh, deliver food from the food center or from the food pantry to people that, that aren't able to get out or are afraid to get out. Um, and and that, that's a small thing that we can do. Um, so if you need that, call Eric and, and let him know that, that you'd like for me to bring it to you and I can do that. I'm not going to stay and visit because that kind of goes against this whole social distancing thing. I'll just leave you on the doorstep and, and talk to you briefly perhaps. but. Uh, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be trying to trying to keep our distance so that we don't, uh, for whatever reason, or infect one another. Uh, though I really don't believe there's anyone that's infectious in Lake City, but that's another story. Um, but in this time when we're all staying in our homes, we're losing that human contact. As Christians, that's particularly difficult because we're people of the body. We believe that we cleave together, that we hold on to one another, that we are our supporters. How do we do that? Perhaps this is a, the, the best time for this to happen because we're able to do things like this where we can do electronics. It's not a perfect way of, of, of staying together, but at least it's something. And maybe it's enough to sustain us, to get us through. But I would suggest to you, um, I did have Clint put together a list of, of phone numbers and uh, for, for people of church, and there's a couple pages here of, of numbers um, for people to uh, to to call each other. And I would ask you take take your marker and uh, and go through there and say today I'm going to call two or three or four or five or six or whatever of these people and just check in on see how you doing. And uh, I plan to start doing that. I, I I meant to call a couple people today, um, but I was working on this sermon. And I was working on my message this morning and some other things. Um, so I will be starting to call myself a few people each day. Um, but I want, this is not just the job of the pastor. It's not just the job of Clint in the office who's called most all of you um, that are on this list just to make sure that it was okay to put your name on this list. Um, that's not solely Clint's job to call and visit with you. It's all of our jobs to check on each other. Check on people that aren't on this list. If there's people that aren't on this list that you think should be on this list, check with them and see if they'd like to be on the list and call me and we'll send out a new list. This list went out by email to those that get the newsletter for, for the church by email, so you should have gotten that today. Uh, those that get letter, the newsletter by snail mail, you'll probably get it in a day or two. Um, 
If you're out there and you would like to stay in contact with the church, you'd like to get our newsletter, you'd like to get information from the church, um, you can go to our, our uh, uh, Facebook page and uh, I believe our email address is there. Uh, if, you're, if not, it's WCCLCIA at gmail.com. Uh, Again, that's WCCLCIA, which is just Woodlawn Christian Church, Lake City, Iowa, uh, at gmail. So, uh, and we'd be happy to send you uh, the, the, week, the, the monthly newsletters and any other correspondence that we need to send out, because there may be more correspondence as we're going about this time of, of, of trial and, 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 and confusion as we continue to deal with the COVID-19. Um, to give you a ray of hope, though, is if you followed my Facebook page at all, um, I did announce that there, there are some really promising studies of some anti-malarial or a anti-malarial drug um, that seems to have had some really good results in a trial in France. In fact, it had a 100% um, uh, success rate at, at, at curing people of the, um, in a six-day in a six-day drug regimen um, of curing people of the, of the virus. So that's an amazing and incredible God blessing of, of a thing. And we pray that that, 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 that as they go about, um, that, that continues to show that level of promise. So, so praise God for the deliverance from, from what's going on here. Um, the president did announce today, and how do we feel? I want to be political. How do we feel about the, uh, the president, Donald Trump? Uh, he did allow um, uh, that the FDA to, to approve that drug for that use and kind of fast track that because there's normal processes of using things and approving things for different treatments. Uh, so praise God that, that, that we, we were able to do some unconventional things and move things quickly. And that's kind of where we're at. We've got to do some unconventional things as a church. And one of which is that we're doing this thing here where we're talking to you remotely. Um, if you have ideas of things that we can do to help you, uh, to help others, uh, to, to remain in touch, uh, please let me know so that we can adapt. Uh, because we're all in this together. I want to hear from you. I want to get to hear that you have great minds that will all work together. Um, I do have an, a, kind of a, a little bit of an uh, interesting idea. I haven't broached it to Kim or, or to uh, Scott, um, our, our uh, Christian council chair yet, um, but I do have a little bit of an interesting idea of something to do, and we'll stay tuned and see whether I, I put this all together in, in just a, a way that we, can, that we can feel like we're, we're really the, the, the blood and the body of Christ together. So as you go forth from here, Please remember to be a blessing to someone each and every day. And you can do that as simple as calling someone that's, in, that's isolated and brightening their day by being a human voice and showing love and concern to that person. Because we truly do love one another. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine down upon you and grant you all his peace. Amen. I'll see you in the morning, 9 a.m. Please tune in on the Facebook channel. God bless.